So I had a recording of me doing this um, St. Crispin's Day speech from a few years ago, but I couldn't find it, and um, I figured, what the hell, I'd record it again using a higher quality microphone anyway. Um, as I said in my blog post, I uh, I love the various performances of Henry V out there. I especially love Branagh's performance. I, I actually think he does a better job. Um, in the filmed version than Olivier does in his filmed version uh, and really better than most other recorded versions I've heard although I very much like Richard Burton's version as well um, but they don't exactly capture what I hear in my head when I'm reading it um, or even watching the play yes uh, a live actor's performance Certainly, uh, I, I register it, but um, I know the material so well and I love it so much that when I'm hearing that actor do it, I'm also hearing in my head the way I think it should be. So, anyway, this is a, a reading from Henry V, um, Act 4, Scene 3. Uh, it's generally called the uh, colloquial called the, the Crispin's Day speech. No, my fair cuz, if we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss, and if to live, the fewer the men, the greater the share of honour. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor care I who doth feed upon my cost. It yearns me not if men my garments wear, such outward things dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honour, I am the most offending soul alive." Now, faith, my cuz, wish not a man from England. God's peace! I would not lose so great an honour as one man more, methinks, would share from me. For the best hope I have, oh, do not wish one more. Rather, proclaim it, Westmoreland, throughout my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispin. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand at tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispin. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow is St. Crispin. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth as his household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispin shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few. We happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves a curse they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Uh, it's not exactly my best reading, but, uh, you know, that's one take, so um, that's about the way I hear it in my head.